Yes. And just to keep things interesting, there's a new Firefox download. Okay. So, how to run an admin node in Docker in production mode on a Linux box. Victor, can you perhaps um, move your window a little left so that we can see the left-hand side of the screen you're working in? Uh, it is as left as left can go. That's to the right, okay, perhaps. Well, you want me to put it in the middle? Yeah, yeah. By about nine pixels. First, I need to fix Excellent. Gorgeous. And we're out of time. Thank you so much for Cool. Okay. So now that I fixed my stupid little typo, it should actually run. What it did there is it made sure that uh, the crowbar user inside the Docker container had the same UID and GID as me outside of the Docker container. Because one of the many entertaining things that we do is we bind mount your entire development environment inside the crowbar container so you can hack on code live. In the development environment, all changes are instantly reflected inside of Docker inside the container. which means you don't have to screw around with SHFS or CIFS or anything like that when using Docker as a development environment. And now it is running the Bootstrap recipe, which basically knows how to take a basic container and throw all of the prerequisites that we need to run the Crowbar web server onto it. Um, the Docker images that we're using already have most of these prerequisites in place, and I uh, update them regularly, and then update the Docker admin script to use the new Docker image. And now it is actually bootstrapping the Crowbar web UI. Now it's firing up the Corpora Web UI. And now it's actually changing all, making all the changes it needs to make to go ahead and start bringing up nodes on the admin server. And we can monitor its progress. And it's already more than halfway through bringing up the admin node. Those throppers always reminded me of a front-loaded washing machine. They are almost as entertaining to watch as that, too. I totally disapprove of likening open crowbar to a washing machine. Clean and I clean. authorize this message. <laughs> okay. 
And provisioner server can take a while to run because it's because we are actually running everything fully in online mode. Um, so it's having to download and install packages from the great wild of the internet. So it's not unusual for that to take a bit. Where is it spilling the logs now? Uh, var log pro bar. Excellent. Yes. Pretty much everything. So if I were to look there, I'd see a lot of wgets or a lot of um, ARP yums? No. Um, none of that happens on the web server side. That's all happening inside of uh, Chef Recipes. So you'd actually see installs happening as part of the output from um, the run. Okay. Um, and my run is also um, in Varlog Crowbar or in like Varlog Chef or under Ops Chef or something? No, it's the same place it's always been. Right here, log capture. Oh, in the uh, okay, so it's under the um, it's in the crowbar framework logs. No, no, no. Or this isn't logged into the crowbar framework. This is uh, we captured the output of all the chef the chef solo runs or chef client runs and stuffed them straight into the database. Ah, so if they're in the database, they can't be. They're not greppable. Well, not without using a database, but that's fine. Hey, and it's fully deployed now. While I was while I had my back turned. Okay. And just to show that uh we did in fact bring up a fully functional Crowbar added node. Ah We didn't want to actually do that. No, so make it much more again. Pretty. Yeah. <sighs> Which CentOS are you running on? Or have they standardized on system D? Uh, this is running, well, my development environment is running Arch Linux. Ah. Uh, the Crowbar admin node that I just spun up is CentOS 6.5. And this is spawning a KVM virtual machine that will beat the sledgehammer. And while it's doing that, let's get it prepped to get an operating system installed on it.
All right. For those of you that are curious to see what I actually did there, I created a new deployment named Test1. I put the newly created node into that deployment. Then I bound the crowbar installed node role to the node, which will automatically bind it in the context of the test of the deployment named test one. And then I committed the test one deployment. Now if we go back to the web UI, hit refresh. You see that that's in the test one. And it just changed state on me. Awesome. That's what I wanted. And we should be able to see the rebooting node uh, pop up here on the screen in the next uh, 30 seconds or so. And that is going to reboot and install. CentOS on the node. Rebooting. Mm -hmm. So is this an image install or it's a uh, scripted install? Scripted install, same as we always have done. Okay. While back at um, Chef Summit, um, people were really fond of image installs. And then a little, you know, config on top. Yeah. So uh, basically, you know, chocolate frosted gold bars. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like inventing yet another image install based solution. Yeah. Well, maybe we can steal one. Probably. But the nice thing about the scripted installs like this is they are directly supported by the operating system vendors. Right, right. Um, as we were talking to the Razor guys last night, they do all scripted stuff. They, they put a lot of effort into templatizing um, uh, Pre-seed and kickstart files. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the same direction we go. Their major differentiator in the provisioning world is that they have a, um, a simple Boolean DSL for applying uh, tags to nodes um, to determine which OS will be delivered to them. And so you can, um, and they get the data about what the node is through factor. So there's a discovery image that they call a microkernel, microkernel, and the microkernel has factor on it, and factor sends like oh hi all of the node data back to the to the puppet or the puppet master or uh, to Razor. Razor interrogates it, um, writes a proper uh, IPixy config for it, and um, when IPixy asks for um, how to boot this particular Mac, this particular node, um, uh, IPixy can uh, respond HTTP appropriate for that node. Mm -hmm. It's a fair amount like the uh, a lot like what we do. Except that they expose sort of a DSL. What is this? Four, four, 
And since there's all the stuff that we need to you to do to uh, control that SH is uh, customize instructions for how we're going to boot this node in Sledgehammer. Um, Compute.ks is the customized kickstart for this machine, and crowbar join is the customized um, script that will be run the first time the node boots into the operating system. Then we custom bake each one of the we custom bake one of those for each node. All, all heavily templatized and done through shell. All right, and now the node's booting into CentOS off the hard drive. We go up to Fed UI. You see it running through its paces. Some interesting things that you aren't obvious from what I've done or from uh, what you can see um, is that this install, aside from the basic operating system install, is being performed uh, completely online. It's downloading and fetching all the packages it needs from the internet um, via the caching web proxy that is running on the admin node, um, which is talking to the caching web proxy that I have on my laptop to uh, minimize redundant fetches. Um, if I was spinning up more than one virtual machine at a time, it would only, it would not duplicate uh, fetches unnecessarily for packages that it needed when installing multiple operating systems. Um, so one of the prerequisites to have a fast development environment is uh, probably going to be running a squid cache on uh, in your development environment if it's uh, Linux on a bare laptop or inside of a VM or however you do it. Uh, one of the things I'll be working on is to add uh, fully offline install support back into the uh, system, but um, it's not really a pressing priority right now. So it's going out and grabbing um, the Chef Solo, well, the um, the Chef Omnibus, and installing the Omnibus. I actually, the Chef Omnibus installers are actually one of the things that I pre-cache and create a repository for, and I do that specifically because um, Opscode, or the company formerly known as Opscode, doesn't provide uh, a repository that you can use Yum to install any of the Omnibus installers. Mm. Or Deb or Apt-Get or any of that stuff. It's all tarballs. Um, well, it's not tarballs. They provide RPMs and Deb packages. They just don't add the repository metadata information that we would need to be able to use Yum or Apt-Get. Uh, I don't. Yeah. And I don't feel like hard coding logic into the Chef Solo on. You know, here's exactly what tarball you need to fetch because the role shouldn't care about that. So I actually prefetch those as part of uh, the bootstrapping and set up a little repository that lives on the admin node for that. That's good. And we might want to document it because it's definitely a pattern that like AT&T would have wanted to follow to deploy um, internal packages. You know, so they wouldn't, they, they could just drop all the depths or the RPMs on a um, uh, on a file server somewhere, and let Crowbar pick it up and serve it up as a uh, as a repo. Well, 
that only works in a couple of in specific cases. Um, there's logic baked into the provisioner, the provisioner base role, or the provisioner base images role, that knows how to uh, set up repositories based off of uh, whatever it finds in um, the crowbar extras. Okay. But it needs more work. It's just enough to do what we need for now. Hmm. All right. So that's active. Oh, and while I was waiting for that to happen, it's fully baked. All right, and so there we've got a KVM-based virtual machine that is uh, fully, that we've uh, bootstrapped and installed an operating system on from a uh, admin node running inside of Docker. Um, for now, due to various uh, hilarities on the part of the Docker crew, um, Docker on our nodes has to be configured to use a specific storage backend. Um, AUFS has some bugs that we're exposing with our images, unfortunately. And CentOS 6.5 is the only operating system that you can actually run an admin node inside of Docker successfully right now. Uh, everything else would require a lot of special casing to work around the fact that neither Upstart nor System D work properly as uh, in it inside of a Docker container. But since since OS 6.5 uses System 5 for everything, it doesn't care, and all of the services just work. So the older CentOS 6.5, because it uses SysV, just works. Supports this mode of operation, yeah. Yeah. But those other process managers um, in it are too fancy. They run, they run on, uh, is it because of their PROC ID1, their PID1, or is that? Uh, uh, it's not a PID1 thing. I mean, I mean, we've got a PID1 right here. It's just that um, they're not written to run inside of an LXC container. And so they make us some assumptions that break whenever running inside of Docker. Hmm. Yeah, it's annoying, but um, it is what it is. All right, so that's pretty much the end of my little demo. Any other questions? Um, as of the day before I left for Mexico, um, the the vagrant box that I set up on Ubuntu was um, uh, was working through the Dell firewall and allowing you to download and install everything you needed uh, to run at least an Ubuntu box. Uh, and then um, pull the open crowbar repositories and kick off your install scripts as they existed uh, a week and a half ago. Um, we might want to try to move to Scent if that's the only thing that's working for us right now. Um, fortunately, all this Docker stuff has significantly reduced the work that Vagrant has to do. Yay. Well, to be specific, CentOS inside of Docker as an admin node is the only combination that works for, the, for running an admin node inside of Docker. It doesn't care what the development, what your development environment is, or the VM that you're running Docker inside of. Oh, right, as because it's only thing, upstart. That's the. It's just the upstart that's not the problem. It's not some file system issue or anything. Yeah. Cool. Well, file system wise, uh, you have to be running Docker with the device mapper backend. And the uh, documentation that I pointed to um, acknowledges that and gives the instructions on how to configure Docker. Just take one more look at that um, before we wrap up the call. Um, admin node in Docker. Oops. Ah. I think you need to stop sharing the Skype call. A plan. There we go.
Um, showing the Skype call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so these docs would be. Um, uh, device map. There's device map or storage backend. Okay, so I'll take note of that for the vagrant stuff and uh, and start publishing. I'll publish that out to the list and hopefully get it done um, today, just to have a little something to to keep anybody who's interested um, at a decent velocity with us, um, so they could actually yeah. get an admin node running if they're using Windows as their base OS. Or just like yeah, I haven't really considered that case because uh, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, joke. Um, is there? Uh, we're way over. We're 11 minutes over. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to um, chime in about um, before we wrap things up? Hey Chad, thanks. No problem. Thank Victor, you. Thank you. Many thanks to Victor and, and John. Um, so uh, I'll publish what notes I can recall, and this video will be processed. And uh, I'll try to do a little editing so it will be available on the interwebs for everybody to enjoy. Um, I'll cut out all the cell talk. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, enjoy your snowstorms and your heat waves and your ice. Take care, guys. Take right. care. Bye.